So today we're going to meet Abby, who's the cook here at Yorkshire Camp. So we're going to find out a bit more information about her. So first of all, Abby, tell us where are you from? Um, so I'm from originally from Coventry, uh, which is like the middle of England. Um, and then in about November last year, I moved to Leicestershire, which is not very far away. It's about um, 45 minutes northeast of uh, Coventry. Um, and since January, I've been here in Yorkshire. So what brought you to Yorkshire? in January? Um, I came to Yorkshire to be on the training team here at Yorkshire Camps uh, which basically involves uh, running the camps and um, running activities and leading dorm times um, so that's what I came here for. Great and are you still part of the training team now? No I'm not um, at the moment I am the cook here at Yorkshire Camps um, so as you might have known um, uh, camps got cancelled here, uh, Easter camps and summer camps, they all got cancelled sadly due to Covid um, which meant I couldn't help run any of the other camps and um, so I wanted to be involved in more camps and I loved being here and Yorkshire camps were looking for a cook so I decided to stay on as cook. <laughs> oh wow, so you've come back to be the cook for the, for the team, so you obviously enjoy cooking then, what's your favourite thing to cook? Actually, I prefer baking to cooking. Okay, what's your favourite thing to bake? Um, I like baking lots of things, so I bake like cupcakes and cookies and like white chocolate raspberry loaf cake, that's good. Um, and recently the team have been loving the brownies I've made, so I've made lots of brownies. <laughs> Great, did you always want to be a cook when you were growing up? No. Um, growing up I didn't really know what I wanted to be so yeah it was a bit of a surprise that I've ended up as a cook but here I am and I'm loving it so yeah. Great well it's Christmas soon so what are some of your favourite things about Christmas and your favourite traditions? Where do I start Dan? Um, I like walking around and seeing all the Christmas lights and decorating the Christmas trees and lighting some candles and a little log fire and having a hot chocolate and a blanket and being all cosy and I like going to caroling, um, going to church on Christmas day, eating a full Christmas dinner because come on, who does not like pigs and blankets? They are amazing. Um, you really I, do like lots of things about Christmas, don't you? I do. I could Great. go on. <laughs> well, like you said, sadly a lot of our camps were cancelled because of COVID. So what have you been doing to keep yourself busy or what, what do you do in your spare time? Um, well, as part of my job, I have 12 hungry training team members to feed, which you might have seen over the past few videos. Um, and yeah, so I keep them well fed and watered. Um, then in my spare time, I like baking and going on walks. Um, and I like reading, so I read a really good book during lockdown um, called Trust in God by Jerry Bridges, um, which just helped me to trust God more despite there being pandemic and uncertainty. Um, so yeah, reading is a good hobby. Fantastic, great. Thank you, Abby, and hopefully you can come on camp soon and try some of Abby's amazing cakes. Bye. Hello and welcome back to Truth or Lie, Christmas Tradition Edition. I'm going to hand straight over to our geography expert, Professor McMahon, who's going to show us which country we're in again today. Oh, it's you again. Today we're going to be in Japan. Well, our four contestants are back again to hear another two facts. One is true, the other is false. They must work out which one is which. Why not see if you can beat them? Number one, in Japan, it's tradition to eat KFC for Christmas dinner. So some people will stand in two hour long queues to get hold of it. Tradition to make an origami nativity 
during Advent. The answer was number one. In Japan, they eat KFC for Christmas. Hey guys, one of my favourite things to do in winter is to sit down next to the log fire and just read a book and drink hot chocolate, of course. Um, and recently, I have been reading Treasures of the Snow. Um, it is a book by Patricia Sunjun, and it is a, it's a fabulous Christmas book. And it's got loads of snow, and so your imagination can just go wild. Um, but yeah, it's basically about um, a, a small fight which two friends have, which becomes a massive deal. So after a lot of fuss concerning kittens, Anna and Lucian get to the stage where they can no longer see each other without fighting or wanting to destroy each other's happinesses. During the book, Lucian has to decide, will I be able to forgive Anna or am I going to let her feel the same pain as I felt when she didn't forgive me? And Annette discovers the feeling of guilt when she discovers that she's not as perfect as she thought she was. So during the book, Grandma tells Annette about Jesus when she becomes really fearful and she's full of hatred and she's sad. And in the book, we get to discover whether or not Annette will let Jesus into her life or whether she will block him out and let the hatred keep going. Imagine if you could choose your parents. If before you were born, you could decide who your mum and dad were going to be. I wonder who you'd pick. But more importantly, I wonder what kind of person you would pick. Perhaps you'd pick a dad who was powerful, who could get things done at the click of a finger, and who could get you into places that nobody else could get you into. Or maybe you'd choose parents who were rich, and they could buy you anything you wanted, whenever you wanted it. Or maybe you'd choose a mum who had loads of followers. Everybody wanted to be like her. And so wherever you went, you got a really special treatment. But nobody can choose their parents, can they? Well, except one person. There was one person in the whole of history, Jesus. Because he was God, he existed before he was born, so he could choose who his parents were going to be. But he didn't choose anyone powerful or rich or with lots of followers. When God came to earth as a baby, he chose poor parents who had no power and who nobody had ever heard of. What? Why would you do that? Surely when God came to earth, he'd go big so that everybody knew that he'd come. So why did God choose instead poor parents? We know they were poor because we're told in Luke chapter 2 when they went to make their sacrifice at the temple, they chose two pigeons. And that's what the Bible says that poor people used for their sacrifices. But why? Why would God choose poor parents? Well, it's to tell us this that human power and riches and followers don't make us right with God. His power does. Human power and riches and followers don't make us right with God. His power does. Because if Jesus has had powerful parents, we might think, oh, well, God only cares about powerful people, and so I need to get enough power, and then I can be right with God. But Jesus didn't have powerful parents. And if Jesus had rich parents, we might think, oh, well, God really cares about rich people, so I need to make sure I get loads of riches, and then I can be right with God. But Jesus didn't have rich parents. Or if Jesus had parents with loads of followers, we might think, well, God only cares about people with loads of followers, people who are popular and influential, so I need to get loads of followers, and then I can be right with God. But Jesus didn't have any of those things. But he still made us right with God. 
And the way that he made us right with God was by dying on the cross. The fact that Jesus died on the cross shows us that it's not our power or riches or followers that make us right with God, but it's his power that does. By dying on the cross, he paid for our sin. By dying on the cross, he made us right with God. By dying on the cross, he shows us that his power is what makes us right with God. No one expected that when God's Son came to earth, he would have poor parents. But isn't it good news for us that he did? Um, hello, can you, can you hear me? Oh, hello there, feel me quick, quick. Oh, the children are here. Oh, hello boys and girls. Right, we've, we've been waiting for you because we need some help. You see, we've got some reindeers on the estate and today they decided to play hide and seek with us. And we, the only way we can find them is if we answer some quiz questions in order to have a look at the clues. So can you help us? Right, well, look at our first quiz question. We've got no time to waste as it's raining and it's getting darker and we don't want the reindeers out in the rain and in the dark. That would be quite sad. Right, I'll right. jump into the first question is, what three qualities did Dave suggest we might choose in our parents? Hmm. I'm not quite sure what qualities I would choose in my parents. Um, did you say there were three? There were three, yeah. Three. Um, was one of them powerful? Yeah, I think so, yeah. I think the other one was rich. Yeah. Do you think the other one could be followers? Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Great, right, let's oh. get on with reading this oh, clue. yeah, the clue. An arrow directs the way. Come and have a play. An arrow? Oh, the archery range. Of course. Right, Should let's go. That? Let's go. boys and girls for helping us find our first reindeer. Shall we have our next question? Yes, quick. What kind of parents did Jesus choose? Hmm. Oh, I think I know the answer to this one. Um, can you can you think of it, Phoebe? It begins with, it's two words, and it begins with a double P. Oh, poor parents. Yes, that's it. Right, let's read this Ooh, clue. Next clue. You better be fast, the mud here lasts, or you'll be a soldier of the past. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that can mean. Um, oh, the warrior, warrior run! run. <gasps> yes! Let's have a look at the map. We've got a special map of the Yorkshire camps. Let's see if we can find it on the map. find out a second deer. That was rather a tiring round, wasn't it? <laughs> we got to do that tiring. <laughs> oh, funny. Anyway, Phoebe, have you got our third quiz question for us? I have indeed. What did Jesus' parents sacrifice at the temple? Hmm. What did Jesus' parents sacrifice? What is our sacrifice in it? Was probably animals. <gasps> I hope they didn't sacrifice our deers. That would be very, very sad. Um, um, I think I remember it was two. Two something. Two. Yes. Two. two. Pigeons. Pigeons. Yes, exactly. Pigeons. Right, let's get on with our right. clue. Okay, you ready? I've left this tail as I thought I would fail. So I've left this trail, but you did sail away from my whale. Oh, very poetic. It was indeed. Do you think it rhymes with adventure trail? Ah, yeah, and we did just pass that. Yeah. Let's, let's go check it out. Let's. dark boys and girls. Yes. We need to find these deers very quickly. Well done for finding our first three. Let's find our fourth one. Are you ready for our fourth question Abby? I am yes. Why did Jesus choose poor parents? Mm. Um, do you think it was something to do with the first question? Yes I think you're right. Um, I think the first question was what qualities did Dave suggest we might choose in our parents and we said powerful, riches and followers. Um, I think that Jesus chose poor parents to show us that powerful riches and followers don't make us right with God. Oh, I didn't think about that. Right, 
Wow, let me get on with that clue. Yes. You will find me amongst flowers. I've been here for hours, mm. surrounded by towers. Um, you know what I'm thinking, Phoebe? I'm thinking mm. the kitchen, because kitchen's got flowering. You make, you use flour to make cakes, and there's, 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 a lot, there's a lot of buildings, and I think that would be it. Abby, do you not think of it in the wall garden? Because the flowers actually grow in there, and their walls are a bit like a tower, or towers. <sighs> See, I think you spend way too much time in the kitchen. It's got so dark. I need to use my torch. Oh yeah, and We've got our torch I think it's a bit pointless it. looking through these binoculars anymore. Can't mm. really, can't really see anything. Can't see anything. Should we get to our last question? Yes. Are you ready? What makes us right with God? Hmm. What makes us right with God? Um. Is it his power? Yeah, I think so. But, but, but how does his power make us right with God? Mm. How did he do that? Did he die on the cross for us? Yeah, he died on the cross for us. Yes, he did, yes. Crazy. Anyway, let's get on with this clue. Shall we? Look at the stars and see them glow. Look at the flames below. Look at the flames below. Below? Would that be the bonfire flames? Oh. Ah. Right, do you reckon you can shine your light on this torch? Because oh, yeah. I'm not quite sure where we're going. Hello? Yeah, we've, we've, we've found all of our reindeers. Yes. yes. They're all safe, that's it, that's great. Thank you very much, boys and girls, for helping us find all of our reindeers. It's been so exciting, isn't it? And now, I think we're ready for a hot chocolate. What do you oh, think? Yes, I think so too. Okay. Bye. Bye.